Welcome everybody to the Scale Up Show. This is your host, Ryan Staley, and I have a very, very special guest with me today. I have Clint Orham. Clint is the CMO and co-founder at Sugar CRM. He basically helped found Sugar CRM in 2004 with the goal of enabling companies around the world to turn their customers into loyal fans. He's one of the original architects and developers, co-authored multiple CRM software patents, and Sugar CRM was actually recognized as a winner in the prestigious 2022 CRM watch list. Clint, welcome. Happy to have you on, man. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. You bet. Glad to be here today. Yeah, it was fun cutting it up with you before. So I'm um, <laughs> real excited to get into it with you. And I think it would be awesome to have everybody understand just where you're at and your point of the journey. So can you just walk us through what is your ARR right now? Sure. Uh, Sugar CRM started in 2004. We are currently at 120 million in ARR. Um, other statistics around what else do you want to know about the company? Well, what's your go to market strategy, your primary go to market strategy? Primary go-to-market strategy is focusing on B2B mid-market companies, uh, focusing on helping them solve all of their front office challenges with a particular focus on sales. So if you're a company that's looking to invigorate sales or you have a sales culture in your company, we can help you on marketing, we can help you on customer service, but the area that you're going to come to us for is, is really around that depth of expertise in sales automation and and everything around that topic and and in there our company our customers are typically ones that have built their own form of recurring revenue so you asked me what's my arr right annual recurring revenue um almost every one of my i'd say every one of my customers has some form of recurring revenue whether they call it annual recurring revenue or not um, for those that are in the know around the the, the software industry we call our our salespeople who work with existing customers, customer success managers, mm -hmm. manufacturing industry, they're called account managers, right? You, know, you kind of work your way across the board, but that's the type of customer that, that we help grow. So there's four levers that any company can pull when it comes to differentiation, quality, price, service, and convenience. Um, I would say to a large degree, most every company gets started by pulling the, the, the quality lever or the price lever, right? Product, differentiating around product and innovation or trying to undercut the competition with a lower price. That, that's where we got started, no doubt about it. But uh, you'll also learn over time that um, differentiating on quality on, on, the, on your product is difficult in, in a flat world where where frankly, so many products have just become um, somewhat commoditized, ubiquitous. And CRM software was, was kind of a special different thing 20 years ago. There's lots of CRM solutions out there today. Differentiating on price, oh boy, I got a whole story about that one, but the, the short version of it, differentiating on price is a, no, is a race to the bottom, right. end, of, end of story. So um, where companies are differentiating today and where we're differentiating and where we're educating our customers how to differentiate, is around service and convenience. Make it easy and put a smile on your customer's face. And, and that's frankly kind of at the core of what customer relationship management industry is all about. Either you're building a lifestyle business or you're building a growth business. Now, everybody you talk to wants to say, oh, I'm building a growth business, absolutely. But if you think about the world of entrepreneurs, there's a lot of lifestyle businesses. Right. You know, I'm, I'm opening up a shop. Uh, I'm, I'm self-employed, you know, small business. It's about putting money in my pocket to fund my lifestyle. Uh, a lot of smaller owner operated businesses are really kind of um, lifestyle businesses mm -hmm. to a large degree. And, 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 you know, a big challenge of those companies when they hit a certain level of success, let's call it two, three million dollars in revenues, they start realizing this is more than a lifestyle business. And, and how do I manage the growth around this business? And then there's other companies that come right out of the gates focused on being a growth business. And, and they're going to go look for investment capital very early. And, and we did that. And I wouldn't build a company around the freemium, freemium model ever again. Uh, I, I think not only is it just a difficult line to walk, how much do you put into the free product and how much do you charge for, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we, we erred heavily on the side of putting a lot of stuff into the free. And, and frankly, that challenged our revenue growth. And, and, you know, for those in the audience who might be saying, 
uh, you know, it's not all about revenue growth. Well, it, it kind of is because you need the fuel to grow, right? Revenue is, is how you hire people. It's how you pay your engineers, right? Uh, it's, it's how you uh, expand your, what you're doing for your customers. And, and we just didn't feel like the revenue growth was matching the investments that we were making into the free product. And so we shifted gears there. So big, big early launch was free downloads, um, mass attention, frictionless adoption. And then we started shifting into selling and really selling software. We sell software to help sellers sell, but we kind of sucked at selling ourselves. <laughs> we were better writers of code than we were at selling software. And, and there's a lot of mechanics of how to build a, uh, a growth, hyper growth sales machine. A lot of lessons learned in there. Basically it comes down to one thing and one thing only, velocity. First one to show up wins, right? And there's, you can start unpacking that statement along the way. And how do you build uh, a sales organization that's designed to to be the first one that shows up and and to be driven around the concept of velocity? And we weren't very good at that. We actually were almost, um, you know, you could cast it on from one perspective as. Uh, the cobbler's children have no shoes, or you just cast it from the perspective that uh, we were swimming in leads and we didn't have to be good. And and then, you know, we we had to be good to maintain the the, the growth rate at selling. And so we, we learned how to be a real sales organization. Mid-market's a mindset. It's not a specific measure. It's a mindset in that uh, you're no longer small, but you're not yet large. Right. And, and if you're a middle child like me, uh, you had a real kind of deep emotional connection to that. There you go. Yeah. Middle I'm children. Like, uh, mm, middle you know, children. Yeah. Your it, it, yeah. Right you're, you're always trying to keep up with your older brother. And, and why does your little sister get uh, get everything handed to her? Right? So, so true. So <laughs> it, true. Is. Oh. it is. All right, so go ahead. Sorry. We can do a whole episode. Uh, uh, there you go. And, and, and there's kind of a bit of that mindset in mid-market that, you know, on one hand, you're, you're trying to knock back the little guys. On the other hand, you're trying to out-compete the big guys. And, and, and in there, kind of the, the key point is I'm growing. And, and percentage-wise, you can hit some really fantastic growth numbers when you're a mid-market company. It's tough to show, to, to peg those kind of numbers when you're, when you're a large enterprise, billion-dollar-plus company. Now the little guys, they can show like 300% growth year to year and you know, okay, well, you know, so you went from 300,000 to 900,000. Good for you, right? <laughs> Try and go from 30 million to 90 million in one year. Hmm, right? Uh, that's, and, and there's mid-market companies that are doing that. And so the thing I like about mid-market companies is they, they, they have professional leadership teams. They have capital to invest. They set audacious growth goals. And, and they put the pedal to the metal. And that's, you know, those are fun companies to work with. Shifting gears from the playbook that grew you to where you are to the playbook that you need to get you to where you want to be. Shedding off history and tradition, and that's the way we always did it. And, but, and, I'll, and I'll talk a little bit more. There's some other details in there, but it really comes back to more anything else is is getting yourself into a growth mindset that's by design and not by accident. Because I would argue a lot of small companies almost succeed in spite of themselves. It's almost by accident. Like, oh, hey, that worked. I'll go do more of that, right? And when you're growing a mid-market company, you've got a leadership team who's setting out strategies and you've got a bunch of opinions and you've got people who are, who are wed to the past and then there's new people you've hired who want to who go create a new future. And, and there's a lot of back and forth of, you know, how do we do, how, what's the new playbook? And, and having been through this journey myself, setting aside the playbook of the past, the open source playbook, and selecting a new playbook, CRM experts, not open source experts, uh, with a professionally run sales and marketing organization designed for, for, for growth, got to shift gears. That's hard. Well, we are up on time. It was awesome spending time with you, Clint. Can you let everyone know where they find you, where they could find where they can find you, where they can find out more about Sugar CRM, and then we'll uh, we'll wrap it up. To find me, do a Google search on Sugar Clint. 
So my <laughs> Twitter handle is Sugar Clint. You'll find me on LinkedIn with Sugar Clint. Uh, that's uh, I, I, I started that as a whim 19 years ago, and it stuck. You can right. find us at sh- uh, www.sugarcrm.com. Awesome. Well, thanks for being on the show, Clint. It was awesome. I love your energy. I love where you're My going. My pleasure, Ryan. Um, and appreciate you having you on. Okay. You have a great day. All right. We'll see you on the next episode.